Hi, I'm back, the headless YouTuber, doing headless plenty things, usually with my not headless <laughs> trusty pug pudge, but he is in bed again for another video. That guy's slacking. As you can tell by the title, today I'm going to be showing you guys what is in my plant cabinet. So I do have a video of myself sort of like organizing and Pinteresting my cabinet, um, but I don't really go into detail about what everything is and what I use it for and things like that. So uh, this is going to be a little bit more in depth but I've had this video request in the past. I've also had like tons and tons of DMs and questions about it. And truth be told you guys, I've just, I've just avoided it completely. And the reason that I've done this is because if I have to relate it back to when I got into like the aquarium hobby, I used to have shrimp. I've since then rehomed them because I just, I don't have the time anymore. Um, I was just like, I remember feeling just so confused and just like overwhelmed with information and just all these things that I needed, things to balance pH and then the substrate and then the, you know, the fertilizer for the, for the plants and then how to keep algae off the glass and, and like heaters and whatever. Like I was literally just like, I can't, like I just can't do it. And I almost like didn't even get into it. But my friend Pearl, she's been in the aquarium hobby for um, a while and she just kind of like broke it down for me and just <laughs> explained it to me like I was five, told me the basics that I needed and I just took it from there. So I kind of view this question the same way in that if you're new to the hobby and you, you know, you are just getting into it now, the things that I'm gonna show you can feel really overwhelming like oh my gosh like do I need that and like you know what is that for and you know I don't want to just like say oh this is everything I have in my plant cabinet and then you guys think okay I, I have to go buy everything now so um, as I take you guys through this I'm going to sort of have the mentality that both uh, people who have been in the hobby for a while and people who haven't been in the hobby uh, for a long time yet. I'm going to keep that audience in mind. So as I'm going through it, um, I will mention if I feel like this is something that you need like as a beginner or like if you don't really have uh, supplies yet. Uh, these are things that I would recommend um, getting. And honestly, like when I first started in the hobby, I had like a little bin of things. Like I, I literally did not have much and I, I got away with that for years, you know, granted I wasn't growing the kind of plants that I'm growing now, but really it's not all that different. With all that said, I do need to restock some things. Um, you can't see it here. Oh, there you can. So down here, I just have some materials that I keep that I use very often, moss, perlite, like a, I just burped. <laughs> I'm drinking ginger ale because I'm feeling a little bit nauseous and I don't know if ginger ale actually helps with nausea, but mentally because people have told me that it does, I feel like it does, but I've just been feeling so nauseous over the last few weeks because my sister's pregnant and I am convinced I am getting like phantom pregnancy sickness. I just, ugh, it's not fair. So down here, I keep some materials that I use pretty often um, like moss, perlite, a mixture of perlite and moss, like a little bit of soil. I do need to kind of clean things out, consolidate, refill, and I'm gonna do all of that today with you guys on camera. So yeah, that's what this video is about. Ow, too fizzy. So I was gonna start down at the bottom with the substrates, but things are gonna get dusty in here. And I think I'm gonna wait till the end because then I'm gonna sound all congested and sniffly and stuff. So I'm gonna wait. And then this row here, there's nothing really that exciting besides uh, some of my glassware. And if you're wondering, I get pretty much every single one of my glassware at the dollar store or thrift stores. Um, Ikea sells, I think it's like these two sizes and maybe one more, like a bigger one. They sell these, but they're really expensive, so I would definitely recommend getting it thrifted if you can. I'm not super sure about the lighting situation. All I know is I'm being blinded by the light right now. Better, no. Okay, think, um, think. I feel like I can work with this, maybe. 
lighting situation. Not great, but we're gonna work with it. The first thing that I have are my ties and they just range from like the wire ties or like the Velcro ties. I've got just regular cotton thread in here. I have this brown tape that I don't really use all that often, but I have for whatever reason. Uh, I will say of all of the things that I have, that the Velcro tape is probably my favorite color. My favorite color? Well, I mean, I do love green. The Velcro tape is the one that I reach for the most often. I use it for moss poles. I use it for kind of like fixing petioles to like be in a certain position that I need it to be in. Uh, I use it for a range of things. And then I use like these kinds of wire ties, primarily the black ones. These ones I didn't buy. I just, I got them as part of like a grow light uh, kit. And I just kind of, what is this? <sighs> There's like burlap string hair everywhere. So these were like a lot longer. They were like maybe this long and I since like chopped a lot of it down, but I use it because, I wonder if I can get an example here. Um, I can't find anything right now, but basically what I do is I poke a hole into my, uh, my plastic pots and I use this to kind of string it in and then I like secure it. You know what? I can't explain this. I'm just gonna show you. This is, this is ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Okay, Charmaine. Oh, my politiflorum. I think I did it to that one. Oh, I didn't. Hmm. Well, whatever. I feel like you'll kind of get the point. So this is an Ethereum politiflorum. This is the newest leaf to come out on it and got a little bit like warped right here because it was stuck between two plants and then it couldn't like fully unfurl when it was hardening off. So now it's kind of permanently like that, which is funny, but I am happy with like the size of this um, this strap here. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. So this is what I'm talking about. Like in my plastic pots, I put a hole in here and I use this little thing where I have no clue where I got it. I think I bought a plant once and this was the pole and I pulled it out and I was like, whoa, this thing is sharp and dangerous. But then I found use out of it because it's super easy to just like make perfect little holes. So anyway, I'm sorry, I don't know where to get that tool. It was just destiny that I got it, but I just poke a little hole in here and then I either use one of these things, these hooks that just come with the, su the suction hooks, or I use something like this where I just, you know, stick it in the hole and then I just create like a little loop so that I can hang things and exos and stuff. I'm sorry if that makes zero sense at all. I can't believe I can't find one right now, which is kind of cray. Oh, a new leaf. In here, it's labeled gloves, but I have a few more things than gloves. I do have my pink gloves that I use when I'm handling cacti. I've got this little thing. If you watched my video coming back from California, I got this from the dollar store and it's a microfiber cloth and I use it to polish off my leaves and clean the leaves. I've got a bunch of different socks and gloves in here because I use these to clean my plants too. I just put the socks on my hands and then I clean it. These are more just gloves for handling spiky stuff too or when I'm handling soil that maybe has like a lot of husk in it and I don't want to get splinters and stuff. And then just masks that I <laughs> reuse way too many times for when I'm handling stuff like perlite. Um, and all the dust is going everywhere. You know, you don't wanna be inhaling that stuff. This is my box that is literally called miscellaneous crap. And I'm not gonna really go too in depth on what is in here just because it's just a bunch of random stuff. Like I have my Atmo Fix, which I love. I just don't need it right now. Oh, and if you don't know what an Atmo Fix is, this is a portable humidifier. And I saw these things like on Instagram ads and on like being pushed on Amazon. I was just like, oh, it's so gimmicky. Like that thing is gonna break in like a hot second. But you know what? It's worked so well for me. Whoa, Alice bought a different brand on Amazon and it like, it died on her like really fast. So I would recommend the Atmo Fix brand. It's the only brand that I have experience with. They did send this to me to try out and I love it and I wish I had more, but you can only get it through their website. So just keep that in mind. I've got stuff for weather sealing and I have some of my old like Mars Hydro tent stuff in here. Got like 
extra caps for from when I did my um, my Rudsta build and that's about it so nothing super exciting in there you guys are probably like why did you even show us that crap moving on literally just a box of humidifier stuff uh just like you know those extra filters and oh these are the little wick things for the atmo fix the replacement ones and then some of the humidifier cleaning stuff and then just some string just you know you never know when you're gonna need some string but we're gonna move up now into the more juicy stuff so the next few things i'm gonna go through are all of the fertilizers that i have looking at it right now i'm not necessarily using all of them and i will go into why so the first one that i have is my trusty trusty liquid gold leaf i'm sold on this stuff i love it so much this one you can only get in the uk unfortunately the last that i spoke to um liquid gold leaf they told me that they were working on north american distribution i don't know where they are in the process of that right now but all i know is that you can only get this stuff through them or through one of i don't think that they have any like partners maybe they do like people that buy lgl in bulk and sell it like at their shops but if they did i think they're all in the uk anyway and none of them can ship to us just going into this fertilizer a little bit the npk on this is 9516 so there's nine percent nitrogen five percent phosphorus and 16 percent potassium honestly i don't ever remember burning plants using this fertilizer i have burned plants in the past using other kinds of fertilizer which i'm pretty sure i got rid of already nope i have one of them i use this for every single one of my plants anything from anthuriums to philodendrons my ripsalis my cacti it doesn't smell the worst but it doesn't smell great and i would not recommend making a batch of fertilizer water that is a lot more than what you need because when it sits for a while, it stinks. I promise you, you don't wanna do it. Just don't do it. Just take a, just take a good whiff. <laughs> Like a solid whiff. <laughs> God damn it. I'm so mad right now. Okay. Oh, I can already smell it. No, oh. you, you spoiled it. Smell. Oh. <laughs> oh. What the f is that? Babe, you have got to be kidding me. So, anyway, love this stuff so much. I've got about, this bottle is basically full. This one is about a quarter left. So I'm honestly, I'm using it very sparingly because I just, I don't know when they're gonna come back. Another fertilizer that I have is my Marfil Soil Enhancer. It's not branded as like a fertilizer. It's branded as a soil enhancer. It is a marine phytoplankton, <laughs> marine phytoplankton based. I have been using Marfil for I want to say getting close to three years now and i use this stuff year round um not as like a base fertilizer but sort of just exactly what it says as an enhancer plants love kelp they love seaweed uh this is just packed with calcium magnesium nitrogen phosphorus potassium iron and it's just yeah just like a nice little enhancer but i would not recommend using this as like a fertilizer on its own. I definitely would recommend using something a little bit stronger than this because the uh, amounts of each nutrient is very small. I just got this on Amazon. They are a Canadian company. I've worked with them on a giveaway before. They were one of the first companies that collaborated with me when my Instagram was much, much smaller. And um, I just, I love everything they're about. They're a great company and I will continue to back them for a very long time. Okay, moving along. Oh, I keep forgetting. Okay, so this is my number one on my beginner's uh, recommendation list. So if you're watching this and you're a beginner and you're just getting into the hobby, if you're looking for a starter fertilizer or something to just kind of give a nutrient boost to your soil, your current soil, I definitely recommend this. 
Now moving along, um, this is the Miracle Grow Orchid Spray that I use for my orchids. I only have, I think I have three orchids right now and I just use this as a foliar spray and I also use it on the moss that it's on. All of the orchids that I have are mounted to wood so I will just spray this on the actual wood. I'll spray it on the moss that's attached to the wood and then on the actual foliage and I don't know, I just got this from just like the store. Um, it, this is kind of like the standard spray that they have. I know that there are a lot of other kinds of orchid sprays that people have recommended, but honestly, my orchids are growing fine and I don't even really know how to care for orchids and I've managed to keep all of them alive. They're all growing. They're all probably double the size that they were when I first got it and yeah. So this is CalMag. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably know that I'm always hyping up this. Sorry, my husband is actually sick. You might hear him coughing in the background, but um, I'm always hyping up this fertilizer and this stuff is mostly calcium and magnesium, obviously. There's also nitrogen and iron and uh, kelp and micronutrients. I find that this fertilizer is really, really important in assisting emergent leaves. They just, when I'm feeding with this while they're growing, it's like they, they can emerge from their caterpillar or their petiolar sheath a lot more easily. A lot of the leaves that would normally sort of come out mangled are just really nice and beautiful looking. I'm a little bit sad that I didn't get a chance to try this out with my Brantianum, my Philodendron Brantianum. I struggled with that plant so much, but I, I didn't really use this on it and I kind of tossed it before I gave it a chance. But I would be really curious to know if maybe this was the missing element because I gave it the, the humidity, I gave it the moss pole, I gave it the fertilizer, but I didn't ever feed it CalMag from what I can remember. I'm gonna throw up a photo though of my friend Jing's plant. Uh, it is a philodendron sodorini, so it's like the small form of the sodoroi. That one was struggling a little bit when Jing gave it to me to rehab and really, all I did was give it adequate humidity. I think it was living in like 70%. I fed it at a quarter strength almost every week since it was still actively growing in my care. I'll also throw up a photo of what it looked like when I gave it back to her. It was very hard to give back that plant because I got really attached and it was beautiful. But I just find that the nutrients in there really help with like cellular growth and creating a healthy root system, which are all very important parts about growing healthy plants. So I'm gonna show you um, my philodendron sodorini and I wanna bring, I bring up this plant specifically because I feel like there was a lot of chatter in the plant community when this plant uh, not first came out but when it kind of gained traction online and a lot of people were selling them. Uh, everyone was saying that it was sick and you know all of the leaves would come out mangled and there was something wrong with it, like a virus. And I mean, if you looked at Jing's plant in the beginning, you would think, oh yeah, that doesn't look great. It looks like something's wrong with it. But I'm telling you, CalMag fixed that issue for me. So this is my Sodorini. It's really big now. I just, I don't remember how long I've had this, maybe over a year now, but I have chopped it back several times. If you look at the leaves down here, they're like, they're pretty small, pretty narrow, but we get closer to here and it does start to look a bit more like a sodoroy. Sorry, this lighting is really bad for plants. But yeah, like look at this leaf, uh, this leaf, this is the newest leaf to come out. And it is just, loving it and I am feeding it liquid gold leaf but I'm more heavily feeding it CalMag. And I did try growing this plant um, back in 2020. The beginning of 2020 I acquired one and it just, it, it would, it looked just like Jing's plant but, but a little bit worse. And yeah, for a little bit there I was like convinced that yeah this thing is sick, it's got some kind of virus. but. I think it's CalMag, I don't know. So the next one is this MSU plant feed. I can't really say much about this off the bat just because I've only been using it for a little while. I think I've mentioned it in a previous video that I was testing out some fertilizers right now to see if I could recommend them and this is one of them. So I'm still sort of in that testing phase. I, I don't really have anything right now that 
I'm like convinced that it's amazing. So yeah, like me and a bunch of my friends are trying this right now and I don't know if any of them have ever talked about it. I know Alice is using this right now. Jing is using this right now. I think even Aaron is using this right now. But yeah, so far so good for all of them from what I can tell, but just I have nothing really to report quite yet on it, but maybe in a couple months, we'll see. The next fertilizer is the Schultz liquid plant food. This was actually the first fertilizer that I ever used when I was in the hobby. And that's because this is the one that's kind of like readily available at the store. If you go to like Home Depot or Lowe's, you can usually find this there. And I haven't really had a problem with it. Honestly, I, it's a good fertilizer. I do think I have burned a plant with this before, but that was like way in the beginning of the hobby when I was just getting started. I would definitely recommend that if you are just starting. It's just a very basic fertilizer and it's good. So yeah, and it's not expensive. So I would, I would start with that. Also get Marfil and you got yourself a good little combo there. Oh, I must have gotten rid of it. Did I? I guess I did. Okay, so I thought I had it in here, but I used a very small amount of newt. Um, I had a bottle about this big to test out and I didn't like it. Some people love it, but I really don't like it and it burned a lot of my anthuriums and I was pissed and I never used it again. So newt, I can't recommend it, unfortunately. So uh, moving along, this is my little rooting hormone mixture. This is just equal parts of sulfur powder, which you can get at a really any nursery. Uh, sulfur powder is like an antifungal, antibacterial. So along with sulfur powder, there's also cinnamon powder, cinnamon powder and rooting hormone. So I don't have the, I don't have the package of the kind of rooting hormone that I use, but I'll throw up a photo here. And yeah, just equal parts of each. You mix it all up and on cuttings, I just dip it and yeah, I've had great success with it. And then just some extra cinnamon. I can't remember the kind of cinnamon that I was reading about. Apparently like regular cinnamon doesn't really do anything for your plants. Like it doesn't have enough of like that anti, uh, not anti-inflammatory, antifungal or antibacterial elements. But I don't know, I've been using regular cinnamon. It seems like it's fine and it smells really good, so. All right, now we're getting into the pesticides. So I have two bottles of Dr. Doom Thrip Killer. This stuff has saved my ass so many times. Uh, it says that it kills leaf miners, exposed thrips, white flies, aphids, and other pests listed on the label, which is a lot and I'm not gonna read it. An important thing to note though about using this is that this is not gonna kill the larva inside of the leaf tissue. I haven't done a video on thrips yet, but if you didn't know, the adult thrips embed the eggs inside of your plant, like the tissue of your plant, and you can't really get to them, giving them a spray so you'd have to use something like a systemic or something that can be absorbed via the roots to kill them sort of internally or from within. But this one will definitely kill the thrips that are already hatched. But, you know, even though it doesn't kill the larva, I find that this has helped so much in just containing an outbreak and I just feel a lot better knowing that I have this on hand if I ever see any thrips that are out and I don't want it to spread to other plants. I can just kill anything that's exposed, which is very important, and then go ahead and isolate the plants that have been affected. So I do think that this is only available in Canada though. A very similar product that you can get in the States is Captain Jack's Dead Bug Spray and this also kills exposed thrips. I really only use this for thrips and spider mites because the only other pests I've really had to deal with before was scale and mealybugs, but I only had mealybugs because of an import order. Scale, I don't know where the hell they came from. They just pop up all of a sudden. I don't think that this kills scale though. You have to use like an alcohol swab and like you have to scrape it off, it's a whole thing. But yeah, this is really good for thrips and spider mites. Again, it kills the exposed ones. So you'll still need to do something like a systemic or um, isolate it for, you know, the 30 or I think, I think like the, the eggs can stay dormant for pretty long. So you just, yeah, you gotta keep an eye on them. 
This was another Dr. Doom can that I picked up and it was, at some point there was like a legit shortage of Dr. Doom thrift spray here in Canada because I say this all the time, British Columbia is a thrippy place, there's a lot of thrips here and when one person gets thrips, it seems like we all have thrips and so obviously we're all buying the sprays at the same time. So the white can was sold out, they only had this green one, which I don't really actually know what the difference is because the active ingredient in this one is parethrins and I think that's the same, oh, parethrins. Parethrins and permethrin. This is too much science for me, but it did work really well for my thrips outbreak, so, you know, I keep it. This is another one that I always have to have. This is just my Safer's Insecticide. I, I find that this one is a little bit less abrasive. I have used this primarily for spider mites and it's worked really well on my alocasias, my gloriosums and my, I think it was my philodendron Dean McDowell that I struggled a little bit with spider mite. So yeah, this stuff is really great. So I'm going to include this as another thing to get if you are a beginner. I would definitely recommend getting some kind of insecticide spray that is available to you, but if you can get one like this, it is ideal. I've definitely shown this guy a lot on my channel and it's very dirty, but this is just my Dr. Bronner's Pure Castile Soap. This one comes in a lot of different scents. There's like peppermint, lavender, there's a green one. I think it's like eucalyptus, but I, I don't know. I prefer using this one and I think this is the baby one. It's like for babies, does it say? Yeah, baby unscented. So this is really good if you have some kind of pest outbreak and you need to clean your plants. It's not as abrasive as something like Dawn Dish Soap that is meant to remove lots of grease. I can't remember the video that I would have talked about why I don't like using Dawn Dish Soap. Surprisingly, nobody's actually come for me saying, like, stop talking crap about Dawn Dish Soap, but I just, guys, I, you can't get me to use it on my plants. I just won't do it. So yeah, um, I really like this stuff for cleaning plants. So I'm also going to include this for people that are beginners. If you deal with something like spider mites pretty often, I would recommend using the peppermint one. The smell is a little bit strong in my opinion, but the peppermint oil, it helps deter pests. So it's a little bit more useful that way if you're using it as not just a thing to clean plants, but to prevent pest outbreaks or treat pest outbreaks. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you before I take a little break, because I bet you, oh, my camera's hot. So this is just a copper fungicide and it helps treat stuff like black spot, powdery mildew, downy mildew, and early blight. I was using it for my like weird fungal things that would get on my anthuriums. I've had powdery mildew before. I think it was powdery mildew. I used this on it and it just, it didn't spread or it went away. I had a fungal thing in my Anthurium XO and I was really worried it was gonna like take over all the plants. So I did a really heavy treatment of this stuff and it like completely resolved. And I was like, st I was stunned because this was the first time I had ever used this before. If you're looking for a good fungicide, I definitely recommend this one. And this one is just from Bonide. Hi buddy, come here. I've missed you. I must be getting close to dinner time. Oh, look at this big boy. Hello everyone. I've come to collect my dinner. I know the light is kind of blinding, huh? You get used to it though. Okay, so we're moving on. Um, I'm gonna keep Pudge with me for a little bit because I miss him. He's been with his father all day because uh, Vince is sick and so he's just been in bed and Pudge loves being in bed, huh? The next few things I have put into little jars because you know, I was trying to do the Pinterest thing and be all cute. It was actually really helpful. Honestly, organizing this cabinet was probably one of the best things I could have done for myself just because things are way more orderly. Cleaning up after filming is just so much easier because I know exactly where everything goes. Everything has a place. So if you have been thinking about organizing your plant cabinet or your plant box or your plant corner, whatever it is, I highly recommend doing it. He is so precious. This is my baby. Guys, I just can't with how precious this kid is. So the next thing that I have is decorative sand. I don't really know why I have it, to be honest, just because I don't really ever use it. Uh, a lot of people like to top up their cacti with sand, but um, I've done that in the past just purely for aesthetic reasons, and the sand eventually as you water, it'll like sink 
lower and lower until it's just in your substrate and I don't know I'm just I'm really not a fan but uh, but if you watched my back from California video you'll probably know that I am on a quest to make a cute exo with mushrooms and gnomes and little fairies and stuff so this might come in handy if i'm trying to make things look really cute which is why i've kept it so uh that is one thing that i have another thing that i have are hooks and i use this primarily for my exos uh, i use it to hold up grids um, in the back i use it to hold up plants on the wall and yeah, they've worked really well for me. I've gotten most of these on Amazon, if not the dollar store. I do have these industrial hooks in my big EXO right now. If you watch, oh, which video would it have been? I really can't remember which video it was in where I showed it, but it's uh, it can hold like 10 pounds or something, and that wall in there is heavy. So yeah, I always have to have some hooks. The next thing I have is kelp extract, and I don't really use this in my substrate. I use it more as a foliar spray, and it's just one gram to a liter. I'll just stick it in a spray bottle and just, I usually spray emergent leaves with this. If I, I don't know if I've really noticed a huge difference, but I use it, I just do it. This is the sulfur dust that I was talking about. Uh, the next thing I have is some systemic, and this one is just Bonide brand. They're the granules that you put in the, in the soil, and you cannot buy this stuff in Canada. It's like a threat to bees or something, like they think people are gonna use it outside or not dispose of it correctly. But if you're using it responsibly, if you're using it on indoor containerized plants, this stuff's not gonna last forever and ever and ever in the soil. So as long as you're not like using it and then you're like throwing away the soil or like dumping it outside, it's not gonna harm the bees from what I have researched. But yeah, I only use this inside. I actually brought this across the border from when I moved. They inspected everything that I had. I had to give an itemized list of everything that I had with me. And you guys, I, itemized that thing down to the like the pairs of socks that I had. It was a whole thing. It took like three weeks to get this list done. But yeah, I wrote that I had systemic for plants and they didn't flag it or anything. So anyway, this is what I use on all of my plants preventatively. I apply this probably every other month on plants that are like prone to spider mites or thrips. And uh, I don't use it a ton on my exoplants just because they're already kind of protected from bugs outside. I find that using just like the insecticide spray inside of the tent and the exos work really well for me. But every uh, now and then I will apply systemic proactively just because it's so much easier to be proactive than reactive when you're dealing with pests. So yeah, I have the bottle. So this is the one that I use. And that's the only kind of systemic that I've ever used. I don't have experience using any kind of other systemic. I just feel like it's one of those things where if it works, I don't really see the point in needing to experiment with all different kinds of systemic. So yeah. And then last but not least, I need to restock this like yesterday. This is my mycorrhizal inoculants. I will do a video on this soon. If not, I'm pretty i'm pretty sure alice will probably do a video on her channel i know everything that i know about mycorrhizae through her she's the one that put me on this stuff so we call her like the mushroom well i call her she's like the little mushroom queen so yeah i feel like Alice doing a video on this would probably be a lot better than a video I could do on it. But anyway, I use this on all of the roots of my uh, established plants. And I would say that for people that are new to the hobby, definitely get yourself some mycorrhizae. <laughs> Fun fact about me, when things go wrong, I put my, my hands over my ears thinking it's gonna help the situation. It never does. So we're almost done with this shelf. Oh my gosh. Here is my catch everything vessel. We've got everything from paintbrushes to spoons to toothbrushes, a hole puncher. There's just about everything. And honestly, I do reach for this stuff pretty often. There's nothing in here that I really want to bring to your attention. If you can find some of these, my mom literally just brought me home like a whole pack of it. I gave half of it to Alice. 
These are really great if for your fertilizers and stuff. But yeah, I use the toothbrushes to clean my chunks. I use the paint brushes to dust on diatomaceous earth. Magnifying glass for pest inspections. Anyway, I feel like everyone's kind of got that little, you know, uh, drawer with like the random things in it. So this is my equivalent of my etc. drawer. And then I used to have a lot more in here, but I've since used it. I keep stuff that I use for poles in here for like my little mini poles. And you can see I've got one in there. And then just more hooks. I feel like every time I go to the dollar store, I just pick up a pack because I'm always needing them. So yeah, I've never actually, these are two brands that I've never used before. So I'm hoping that they're good. These ones look kind of flimsy and like, like they would drop a feather, but we're gonna try it anyway. What is that sound? Did you guys hear that? So that is that shelf. So now I have two more shelves to get through, but we are almost there. Is a neighbor really like drilling something right now? Well, I guess it's only eight o'clock. Don't be a Karen Charmaine. Next up is my little jar of rocks. I use this to stabilize plants. I actually just did one the other day. So this is one of my philodendron gloriosums. I just repotted this one and because gloriosums typically are planted... Oh my gosh, just what I... Every time I start talking, they start drilling. Don't be a Karen, don't be a Karen. They're just doing things. <laughs> okay, trying to ignore the drilling sound. This is just like one of the things that I have to deal with living in an apartment. But uh, I just repotted this philodendron gloriosum. And because gloriosums are terrestrial plants, meaning they grow along the forest floor. Oh. They grow along the forest floor. You want your rhizome to sit above the substrate and let it crawl along the top of your pot. So this one I needed to get into a bigger pot because it had reached the end and I could see that this caterpillar was getting a little bit bigger. So on plants like this, I will put like a little rock here to keep it upward or else it's gonna fall down. And then as it gets more established in the pot, then I can remove it or you can leave it. It's really not like a huge deal. Sometimes I'll put uh, one on either side, but since this plant is fairly small, I only needed one. And then, I can't focus with my neighbor doing that. Oh, she just texted me. So my neighbor's having a new table installed. She says it'll be done in about 20 minutes. So anyway, I'm gonna just try and power through it. I don't even know if you can really hear it in on your end, but um, this is just, I've just got some scoops in here. I picked these up from the dollar store in like the party aisle. And I use these small scoops for perlite, lechuza pond, leca, and they've really come in handy, so. And then, oh, oh, look what I found. Oh, okay. So this is a different kind of rooting hormone. I forgot I had this in here. I got this one from Vandula. This is a different form. It's a, like a liquid based root stimulator or liquid uh, rooting hormone. And it also has fungicide. This is really great. I've used this a couple times. I am more of a fan of the powdered version. I don't know why. I only have little experience with it, but all the times that I did use it, it has worked really well for me. And it actually smells pretty good. I, I don't know if it's bad to smell it, but I really like the smell of it. And then um, I've just got some... I just have Q-tips. I don't know why I have Q-tips. And then I have uh, cakey paste. Cakey paste? Cakey paste? This is like that cloning, the cloning paste. You can like put it on the stem of your plant to like get auxiliary buds to push out. And it's for orchids, but people have used it for aeroids. 
I have only used it for, I think I used it on a Monstera and a Fiddle Leaf Fig with actual success, but I found that it sort of stunted the growth uh, going upward, meaning it stopped pushing out leaves from the top because now it was now focusing on growth from the bottom. So I would only recommend using that stuff if you're really trying to like fill in a leggy plant. Otherwise, I don't really see the point in using it and I've had it in there for forever and I'm probably not gonna use it again, to be honest. It was one of those things that I wanted to experiment with and now I'm over it and that's that. And then just some plant tags. I bought these because I wanted to label my Hoyas, but now I think that I might use my label maker and just put it on the pot because I don't really want these like white tags in every pot, but this is good if you have like propagations and stuff and you just wanna keep track of them. And, oh, and then of course my trusty My trusty chonk scraper, which is apparently an earwax scraper or a dab tool or something. So yeah, I use these to clean my chonks and I just keep it in this little jar because I used to just like chuck it in here and then I would lose it and I really freaked out one day. I couldn't find it and I ripped my whole um, plant room apart just to find it. So lesson learned. All right. Oh. I have a client project due and I keep snoozing this. I just have to do it before I go to sleep. Let's do 11.30, okay. So this is my collection of squeeze bottles and uh, I just got these on Amazon and I use them for a lot of things. I use them for watering and fertilizing my Hoyas. I use them for wetting moss poles. I use it for fertilizing the aerial roots on the moss that are attached to the moss poles. And I just like that it's very like intentional watering, very controlled watering. I try and keep everything separate. So I have one just for water. I have one for fertilizer. And in here I have a little bit of cow mag that I need to use and then this one has hydrogen peroxide and then this one is just kind of a another one. I don't really use this one all that often because the plastic is so like it's so hard and rigid it's hard to squeeze. I like these bottles that I got from Amazon because they're <laughs> what did I think was gonna happen? because they're a lot softer. I'm not gonna squeeze it again, but yeah, the, the plastic is a lot softer than this one. And it's just like, after you're doing it for a while, you're gonna feel like your hand is like on fire. So definitely got ones that are a little bit thinner and uh, your hand will thank you. <laughs> I have all these jars that I got from the thrift store. Um, I have this one for Lechuzapon, which obviously I need to refill. This one is Phyton 35, which is an anti-fungal, a mixture of cocoa husk and moss. And the moss that I used in this are ones that I've boiled down a lot already and have started to decompose. So I just kind of shredded it up and then mixed it with this moss or mixed it with the husk. And then I have worm castings, diatomaceous earth, pumice, and fluval substrate. So I would say of all of these things, I would recommend getting diatomaceous earth. This is really good for keeping out fungus gnats. I just take a paintbrush and I dip it in and then I just kind of tap it onto the top of the substrate. And honestly, you can reapply this like pretty often. It's all natural, it's food grade. So yeah, just keep like using it as a topper for your plants and yeah, and keep those fungus gnats out. I wouldn't say that you can like replace sticky traps altogether with diatomaceous earth because I've been pretty like good about doing my DE applications, but I do find that the sticky traps are still quite helpful. I don't love the way the sticky traps look. I hate when the leaves stick to the sticky traps, but you can definitely minimize the amount of sticky traps that you need to use around the house and in your greenhouses when you're applying something like DE. And then I just have a random jar for chonk cleaning. I need to get my other uh, toothbrushes in here. And then I actually have a bigger scraper. This is actually Jing's, I need to give it back to her. I didn't really like this one too much. The tip of this is a little bit too dull for my liking. Mine is pretty sharp and 
it's it's just got like that perfect sort of angle to get all of that tissue off this one is a little bit too soft and even though it's maybe less abrasive you do have to use more pressure so i find that the trade-off isn't really worth it and i don't know this thing is a little bit heavy and clunky i really like that mine is tiny and i just have more control with it and yeah this is it's heavy so I didn't really enjoy that too much. This is just a jar of my pest supplies that I use for fungus gnats. I've got these big yellow sticky traps here that I can cut down to size. I have smaller ones. And then this is just mosquito junks that I will use a mortar and pestle and then grind it up, put it into some water and then just water. Yeah water my substrate. All right, so I have three spray bottles that I use. Uh, one of them I just keep on my table since I reach for this one the most often. I started with this spray bottle when I first got into the hobby. It's like, it's better than the regular spray bottle where you have to keep pumping it. This one is like, it's got sort of like a longer spray with just one pump. You don't have to keep like pressing it. So I really like this one, but when I upgraded to this automatic one, I pretty much stopped using that one because it's like, you know, why would I use a manual sprayer when I can use an automatic one? And this was my trusty guy for a long time. I still really love it. It's just after I got this one, I just stopped reaching for this one only because this one is a lot lighter. Yes, the capacity of this is larger, but the trade-off for me is worth it to have something that's a little bit more comfortable in my hand, a little bit easier on my wrist. And I actually find that the the spray tip of this one is stronger and wider than this one, even though this one looks a little bit more industrial. I still say that this one is a great sprayer. It is cheaper than this one. I think Mossify did gift this to me. I'm not 100% sure how much it costs. I think this one was $30 Canadian and I just got it on Amazon. But yeah, they're both really great sprayers. It really just depends what you prefer. If you're a beginner, I do recommend having a spray bottle just because it's really good for um, emerging leaves. Like if you're not using a greenhouse or you don't have them near a humidifier, sometimes those like new leaves will get stuck in the catafil and just spritzing it with a little bit of water as it's emerging really helps sort of loosen that film and you avoid things like ripped leaves and, and stuff like that. I have these fans that I got for my sister that I was supposed to put into my grow tent, but I haven't done it yet. And then I've got just sort of a box of random stuff, like electronic stuff. This is another thing I recommend if you are a beginner, if you are using grow lights, definitely get your lights on timers. It's just so much easier than having to like walk around and flip on all the switches on your on your uh, on your grow lights and everything can turn off and on at the same exact time you can control it on your phone and i do have a few of them that i use linked in my amazon affiliate page yeah i use a whole bunch honestly there's really not one that i prefer over the other they all kind of perform the same i think that it really just depends on your preference of the shape because they have ones like i showed you that are like that go this way or they have ones that take up both outlets or um, they have bars. So it's, it really just depends. Oh, I was looking for this. <laughs> so this is my little air pump. If you're wondering what I use it for, you can watch my propagation video. I showed you exactly how I use it in that video. And I was looking for this LECA. I was like, so I had one bag of my small black LECA and I was like, I've got like three bags from Vandula and I don't know where the other two went. And they're in here. All right, well, I think we can get this into a jar maybe and then use this for something else. And then the last two things that I have, little cereal bins that I got from the thrift store. And I put fur bark in this one and perlite in this one. And that's pretty much everything. So I'm gonna just show you the things that I have down here at the bottom. And these are things that I reach for pretty often. So this one is, this one is for LECA, obviously. It's uh, sterilized and clean. 
I always keep the dirty ones that need to be sterilized separate. I don't just automatically mix it into my good batch. I have sphagnum moss. This one is just moss on its own. This is aeroid soil. This one is labeled succulent soil. This one was a major freaking letdown. I forgot what brand this is and where I got it, but it was labeled as succulent mix and it was in like a non-translucent bag. So I thought it was gonna be like most succulent cacti mixes where it's like soil, there's a little bit of sand and um, perlite and stuff. And I open it and it's literally just like straight up peat moss, which I don't ever buy. Yeah, so I was just like really kind of stunned that they were marketing this as succulent soil. I don't know, I've been using it for like some of my outdoor plants and just like I don't know. It's literally just been sitting there forever. This box is mostly sphagnum moss mixed with fir bark and perlite and a little bit of cocoa husk. And I use these for propagations, growing anthuriums long term. And yeah, I just like to have a mix already ready so I don't have to always mix it when I need it. And then the last one that I have here is sphagnum moss mixed with cocoa husk and perlite. And I would say that this one is probably my favorite and my most used sphagnum moss mix. Very rarely now do I ever just like stick something purely in sphagnum moss. I really like mixing it with other substrates just because I find that things grow so much better and I can make one package of moss go a long way. Like I, I haven't bought moss in so long and I've been able to stretch it for a really long time, which is nice. So anyway, that is everything in my cabinet. Uh, now I just need to kind of restock things and organize and get everything back in and then we will wrap things up. Okay, well I cannot. I'm actually trapped in here. Okay. Whoa. Oh. Ow. All right. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa.
All right, so everything is in and the cabinet is clean, stocked and organized. I just have a few other things in the closet that I need to find some space for, but other than those things, I am pretty happy with the refresh. Anyway, that is it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about things that I was showing, feel free to leave it in a comment and I will try to reply to it as soon as I can. I sort of get lost in the YouTube comment notifications and when someone replies to a comment that I've commented on, it doesn't notify me. And so I don't know that any anyone has responded again unless I like manually go through the comments, which is crazy because I have like, I don't even know how many videos I have now, but I, I have more than, I think I've got like 20-ish, maybe more. Anyway, thank you guys for watching another video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up because it helps with me and Pudge's visibility on YouTube and it helps our little channel a lot. Thank you for everyone who has been here from the beginning, uh, new subscribers. We hit 6,000 today, which is madness because I literally did not even think we were gonna hit 5K maybe until like our first year and a half or something or maybe like two years in the YouTube world. So it's happens pretty quickly and we're grateful for you all. So thank you so much and I will see you in the next one.